Welcome to another review of a vegan or vegetarian product by me an omnivore. Today it's This Isn't Pork Meatballs. So This Isn't Pork Meatballs. We've had some products from this range before. We had the This Isn't Bacon and we had This Isn't Pork Sausages. I imagine these meatballs are going to be kind of similar to the pork sausages or to the This Isn't Pork Sausages rather. Anyway, Today I'm just going to cook these in a tomato sauce and have them in a kind of meatball sub. Let's have a look at the ingredients. Again, the pack has got this awful piece of blurb here. Anyway, let's have a look at the ingredients. Rehydrated textured pea protein, water, olive oil, thickeners, which is methyl cellulose, konjac, carrageenan and xanthan gum. So really quite a medley of thickeners there. Pea protein isolate, natural flavouring, dried onion, pea starch, dextrin, salt, sage, black pepper, white pepper, ground mace, dextrose, colour which is beetroot red, acidity regulators, calcium hydroxide, and preservative which is sodium metabisulfite. So I can't let Jenny have these unfortunately because she's allergic to sulfites. Suitable for vegetarians and vegans and it says pan fry from chilled on a medium heat in one teaspoon of vegetable oil for eight to nine minutes turning occasionally. Not suitable for microwave cooking. So a little bit of oil in the pan there and the meatballs. Now I imagine this tray is recyclable. The film probably isn't. The cardboard obviously is as well so a eh, bit of a mixture on the packaging. Let's have a sniff of these before they're cooked. Yeah they smell really nice actually. They smell nice and savoury. They do smell kind of meaty. So we'll just give them a few minutes frying before we add some other things into the pan. Yeah, and they do smell kind of meatball-y. They've got that odd sour smell to them that I had on... I can't remember if it was a product from this range or a different one, but they've got that odd kind of slightly sour smell to them. Anyway, while those are sizzling away, let's get some other ingredients prepared. Instead of just regular onions, I'm going to use some of this, which is three-cornered leek, which grows like a weed in my garden. Well, it is a weed in my garden. Um, we accidentally introduced this, I don't know how, with a probably plant we bought in a garden centre some years ago, and it's taken over the entire garden. And it might seem like it's a great thing to have free onions growing in your garden, but actually this is quite invasive, and we have to weed it quite thoroughly to keep it in check. I do need to be careful when I pick this because we've got a lot of other spring bulbs in our garden that grow up in amongst this and for example right here when I was picking it that's snowdrops right there which are poisonous but it's quite easy to identify this three-cornered leek because as the name suggests the leaves have a triangular cross section. I'm going to chop up a bunch of that, I've got some flowers in there as well, doesn't matter it's all just onion so I'm just going to chop this up into little pieces. Right, those have had the amount of time it says on the pack, and they are starting to brown. And we need to be a little bit careful about this, because this is not meat, and it won't brown in exactly the same way as meat. So now, while those are just finishing off, I'm going to put my wild onions in, and I will just stir them around with the meatball and get them a little bit cooked as well. A little bit of tomato puree, which will just fry off before we add the other ingredients. A tin of chopped tomatoes and a little bit of water just to loosen that up but also to get the last bit of tomato out of the can. A little pinch of infinite basil chopped up. A pinch of dried marjoram, kind of similar to oregano. A little pinch of chilli flakes and salt. I'm going to turn that right down and just let that simmer for a little while. Those have been simmering now for about 10 minutes. Let's just give that sauce a little taste for seasoning. Quite sour so I am just going to offset that with a little bit of sugar. That obviously doesn't cancel the acidity, but it balances it. Let's try that now. Better. While this has been happening, I've been making some bread, so I've made some little sub rolls to put this in. That's actually reduced down quite a bit now, because I left it open and simmered it for a bit longer. And we've got a nice reduced sauce now. That looks good. Before I try to assemble a meatball sub, out of these meatballs. I think what we'll do is we'll just taste one as it is like that. That's what they look like inside. Kind of not all that meaty really. More kind of a bit grainy. That's what they look like on the inside. Let's have a sniff first. Well they do smell kind of meaty. 
but they do also smell kind of grainy. Okay, tasting time. Certainly I would say that the texture falls within the acceptable range of experience of something described as a meatball. Flavour, nah. A bit vegetable-y. But not bad. Okay, right, let's put this together then. So I'm just gonna cut in from the more photogenic side of the bread. Now I'm gonna be adding cheese to this, which is going to take it away from being vegan and make it merely vegetarian. I've already tasted it plain anyway. I reckon we can probably squeeze in four of those meatballs. Okay, a bit of salad in the top there as well somehow. And some olives. Um, I guess the presentation could be a bit better there, couldn't it? But we'll work on that. Okay, well, tidied up the presentation just a little bit. So there is my not quite vegan meatball sub, vegetarian, in fact. I think that looks pretty good. Let's just have a little bit of black pepper on there because why not? Okay, time for the taste test. I think I'll go in from this end. Mm. That 100% works. And part of that is because there's so much else going on here that in a meatball sub like this, you can get away with a little bit of drift in the ingredients. It's got the required meaty chew. It's got the appropriate kind of savory flavor. And it's in a tomato sauce. It's got cheese and olives and everything else with it. That actually really works. So there we go, that was This Isn't Pork Meatballs. And I'm gonna say that in a context like this, because of what you do with meatballs, because you put lots of things on them, you cook them in a sauce, you dress them up with lots of other things, you can completely get away with substituting a plant-based alternative such as this, if you want to. So I'm gonna give this one a thumbs up, and I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.